A short train ride from downtown Philadelphia brings you to the Wells Fargo Center. That kicks off a night of holiday hoops. The Wells Fargo Center tonight, it's the home of the Owls as Temple welcomes the Jayhawks to the city of brotherly love. It's Temple and Kansas, and it begins a terrific triple header of ranked teams on our networks. Coming up at 9, as soon as we're done here in Philly, we'll head out west for number 6, Wisconsin, taking on Cal. And over on the U at 11, Loyola Marymount does battle with number 11, Wichita State. A great night of basketball here on ESPN2 and ESPNU, and this is the American Conference on ESPN. Hi again, everyone. Bob Wachusen here with the coach, Seth Greenberg. Thanks for kicking off a great night of college basketball with us here from Philadelphia. The last time that Kansas lost, the only time they lost. They got trounced early this season by Kentucky. They've won eight in a row since. They've been a different basketball team, and at times they've been at their best. They have been a different basketball team. They're getting the ball reversed, or as Bill Self would say, they're getting to the third side. And when they get to that third side and they put Perry Ellis in a ball screen, they are really good. This is their basic high-low offense. Ellis sets a nice cross screen. He's going to get the ball at the top of the circle in the swing position. He'll look to reverse it, but he'll bring it back to the same side and set it down screen. What they're really looking for is they're looking to isolate the post. But on this ball reversal, when Ellis steps up, Look at the driving lane. He is so good. He's a versatile power forward who can put it on the floor and is great going left. Terrific footwork, shows the ball, and finishes. And when they need a basket, they're going to go to Perry Ellis, and he's going to be pretty fashionable. Here off a dribble handoff. This is your six foot eight inch power forward coming back off the handoff. Good spacing, punches it in the gap shoots around it. Perez is a tough matchup. And he is the graybeard in the starting lineup tonight for Kansas. Kelly Oubre and Cliff Alexander, the two McDonald's All-American freshmen starting together for the first time for Bill Self. And for Temple, they have added Jesse Morgan, whose eligibility kicked in one game ago. He played his first game coach against Delaware, had 16 points. And he can be a difference maker once he gets his legs underneath him, the transfer from UMass. That was a shot he didn't like. He's going to shoot it often and deep. Temple is 7-4, and four, but they don't really have a bad loss. Their losses are to Duke, UNLV, in the coaches versus cancer, and St. Joe's and Villanova. That's four pretty good teams to lose to, but they would like a signature win before American Conference play begins. This is probably their last chance. Now this is a team that is a developing team. Now they've got Jesse Murray, Ben Cohen, eligible off of the transfer. Fran Dunphy in his ninth year at Temple. Of course, that followed 17 years at Penn. He also played and coached at LaSalle, got his Masters at Villanova. I've always joked, if he could just go park cars one day at St. Joe's, he'd check every box in the Big Five. He is Philadelphia basketball. He is Mr. Philadelphia, and this team reflects his grit. Tuppen's going to look to manage this game, control the temper of the game off, and smooth defensively. With the shot clock winding down, forcing one from the corner was Morgan. And here comes the player that Bill Self said has been their best, arguably, so far this season. Frank Mason at point has been terrific, and here's Ellis in the post. Nice job of doubling Ellis in the post, getting the ball out of his hand. Mason couldn't hit. The rebound eventually cleared by Jalen Bond. Temple is a real solid defensive team. Last year, they struggled on the defensive end. This year, they're back to their culture. They're keeping it in the front, shrinking the court, contesting shots. First puck in the game goes down for Quinton Dekozi. Quinton Dekozi is wired to score. He is not afraid to put it on the floor. He's got a terrific shot for him. Now seals inside. A little too strong. Interesting to see the two freshmen make their first start on the road. Uh, Ubre is a, a really athletic talent. Cliff Alexander is a wide body that's learning how to play home. Shot clock winding down again for the Owls, although they probably wouldn't mind shortening this game if they could. I think the shorter the game, and look for comes. He is so good at attacking the basket. He's eighth in the country getting to the foul line. He plays two contact, not away from contact. 
He's made 61 free throws already this season. He's averaging about five and a half made free throws per game. So that's about a third of his point production comes at the line. And at the end of the shot clock, they're going to run a ball screen out to him. And most guys are going to come out off of that ball screen looking for a jumper. He's looking to get downhill and attack the defense. Cliff Alexander called for the foul. His first. Bill Self's concerned about Alexander. He seems like he picks up early foul trouble, just not locked in, not as alert off the ball defensively. What's the thought, if you're Bill Self, behind delaying the inevitable and letting the freshman become a part of the starting lineup tonight? In Kansas basketball, you get what you want. And then these young players, basically, it, it's a whole new experience. I joke around, the first half of the season, you unplug the freshman, you plug him back in, and you reboot him. And right now, these guys have been rebooted. Thomas Cummings off the scrambling miss. Nice crossover. And off his leg out of bounds. All Bill Self does is win the Big 12 every single season and win 29 and a half games on average every single season as well. A four time Big 12 coach of the year, but that's probably because they can't give it to him every year. How about this? The guy has more Big 12 championships than he has home losses. That's sick. <laughs> I could sense the bitterness in you when you were reading his bio. No one's supposed to win that much. Zeldin turns the corner. And his pocket pick. So it goes back over to Temple. Pitching a shutout through the first two and a half minutes. So far, Kansas with 0 for 4 from the field and a couple of turnovers. Zeldin does a good job of turning the corner and getting downhill. He's got to come to a jump stop and finish. They've got the ball inside, Kansas. They just haven't finished early in the game. Morgan, foul. They'll shoot three. Zeldin bumped him. Behind the arc. They're going to run a lot of dribble handoffs for Jesse Morgan. That's one way they can get the ball with us. Watch him. Morgan comes off of this screen. Nice little brush back by Jalen Bond, but he's coming off of these dribble handoffs ready to score. When you have Nicosia on one wing and you got Morgan on the other, you've got two wing scorers that are wired to make plays and create offense. This is his second game back after nearly two years off. When he was at UMass, he tore his ACL midway through his sophomore season. At the time, he was averaging about 13 and a half points per game. But then he was dismissed from UMass after a couple of undisclosed violations of school rules, although there was apparently a divide into whether or not he should have been dismissed. And some inside the athletic department at UMass did not think he was treated well. So Fran Dunphy made a couple of calls and was assured that, yes, this is a good kid. And you need to bring him to your program, and he can help you, and you can help him. And that's what he did. But then had to sit out a year, of course, after transfer. So it's been a while for Jesse Morgan since he's been able to play basketball. He's been racing the time getting 16 shots up in his opening game, though. Made a bunch of them, too. Come on. That goes down for Frank Mason. And he has a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. A foul called on Will Cummings. Okay, this first. to be really good. Frank Mason's got to be aggressive. He's got to try to score. He's physically strong. He can attack the basket. He can shoot the ball with range. I call him a poor man's Allen Iverson. Now, he's from Petersburg, Virginia, not Hampton, Virginia, but he's got a toughness about him that's pretty special. Stays with Kansas. For a chance for a four, maybe a five-point play for the Jayhawks. Bill Self's teams are really good in special situations. So they're going to try to score out of underneath out of bounds plays. Selden, no good. And the rebound eventually is pulled down by Jesse Morgan. Morgan down the lane. Gets the ball. Nice job of Morgan attacking that gap. He's got a nice runner. He's just got a feel for how to play. He's a Philly guard. Oubre blocked. Rejected by Devontae Watson. A scramble for it. Taken back by Mason at midcourt. He's tied up. Held ball. And it will belong to the Owls when we come back. Terrific start for Fran Dunphy's club. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Wendy's, proud sponsor of the 2015 John R. Wooden Men's Player of the Year Award. And Land Rover, above and beyond. When you're a city school, that's how you get to the game. You're a strap <laughs> hanger. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? Is that pure dump or what? That's as good as it gets as Temple left the Leacora Center with their backpacks over their shoulders and their uniforms on, walked down into the subway station right by the Temple campus and took the train right down here to the station across the street from the Wells Fargo Center, hopped out of the station and walked across the parking lot right into their makeshift locker room here at the Wells Fargo Center, and here we are. This is a Philly team coached by a Philly guy. This team is all Philly. You know, it's different because I know you came in with the limo and they came in on, on the train. What's up with that? Well, it was nice that you lent me your normal <laughs> ride and driver. I didn't understand why you took the helicopter down here and didn't utilize the services for tonight. But I was glad to get the leftovers. I appreciate it. Scramble for the loose ball. Held once again. And now it goes back over to Kansas. It's a good sign for Kansas that Kelly Oubre's engaged and first to the floor. Now he's got to get involved offensively. They've got to find a way to punch that inside, ball inside and finish around the basket. I look for them to try to isolate Alexander coming to this position. Temple has a seven-point lead, but if you had to check the boxes as to what they have to do to keep this game close and maybe pull the upset, what has to happen? I think they, they do a nice job of controlling the tempo of the game, running on opportunity. Right there, there's Alexander, but he's got to come up and finish that. Good execution, unfortunately, didn't finish. Tomming is called on Quentin Bacosi. That's three straight turnovers for Temple. Great job right here. Uh, Frank Mason coming off of this ball screen, dragging the defender out. Good roll by Alexander. He's got to collect himself and finish. They've gotten the ball to the rim. They just haven't been able to finish. Foul called in the lane before Alexander could throw it down. That foul called on Jesse Morgan. That's his first. Cliff Alexander is going to be a terrific player. The reality is that in high school, he just finished through people and over people. And now he's playing against life size players. He's got to collect himself and play with a better base. That's a foul called on a moving screen. It looks like they've got Jamari Trailer. Check that. Carrying is called again. So, palming violations on back to back possessions. Trailer slides a little bit to the left. He's got to get low. He's got to get wide. He's got to let that player's cup off the screen and let him use the screen. Quick trigger. Won't go for Morgan. It stays with Temple. Going to bring Brandon Green off the bench for the first time for the Jayhawks. He'll replace Oubre. Green had a huge game against Georgetown. He's instant offense. Every time he shoots the ball, you think it's going in. Now, he's got to defend. He's got to make scoring passes. But he's a very good offensive player. Bacosi, he's not shy. Although he's dented the backboard with that line drive. Not much flow right now in this Kansas offense. Yadislav Mikhailuk on the drive, lost his balance and turns it over. And you want to talk about young, but at the same point experienced. We talk about Cliff Alexander being a player that's still just a baby playing the game. Mikhailuk just turned 17 this past summer. He's about as young as a college basketball player can get, but he has a wealth of national team experience in Ukraine. He played for the Ukrainian national team this past summer. In fact, Mike Fratello was the coach of that team. He's got a great feel for the game. He's a terrific passer. At 17, he's just not physically mature enough yet. He's going to be a terrific player. That three goes down for Will Cummings. Timeout called by Bill Self. It's a double-digit lead for Temple. Fred Duffy told us before the game, he wants Cummings to look for a shot within the offense. Terrific job by Cummings, shooting it on rhythm. 
Let's see if that timeout woke up the Jayhawks. The Conlon shot was deflected, saved underneath by Devin Coleman for Temple. Devin Coleman, the Clemson transfer. To Jalen Bond, the Texas transfer. He can't hit. The hustle play, though, keeps it alive. Leaning in a little too strong to Bonte Watson. And an offensive foul call as Mason was in position and took the charge. This has been a, a, an area of contention all season. Good hustle right there by Brandon Green. Keeps it alive. Frank Mason steps up. He's set. His shoulders are square. He takes the charge. Right now in the offensive end, Kansas got to try to find it, get some flow, get the ball reversed, and get something easy. They're not getting anything out of the defense right now. Here's the third side. Let's see what they get when they get the ball reversed. An NBA three. And it bottoms out for Brandon Green. And that's what Brandon Green does. He has the ability to stretch the defense. You're going to watch and see this Temple defense right now. They are shrinking the court. Toes to the three-point line. They're trying to muck up the game and keep everything in front. The answer by Devin Coleman. And the lead right back up to double digits. Coleman, the Clemson transfer. He's a spot-up shooter, but he's got a Philly toughness about him, and he's a very good defender. Watch how... Temple does a great job of keeping Kansas out on the perimeter. Toes to the three-point line. Hard to penetrate against. Help is coming early. How tough was that left-handed finish for Mason? They're going to need Mason and Green to be a little bit more aggressive and try to attack the basket. they got to get something out of their defense and something in transition. They haven't been able to get consecutive stops. Bond for three. That's way off the mark. That's Not his range. Jalen Bond shot. He's got to get that ball reversed. He's got to put the ball in the hands of the playmakers and the scorers. Green tries again. That's on Jalen Bond. That's his wheelhouse. Grabbing a tough rebound in traffic. Post defend, rebound, second screens, and playoff penetration. Jesse Morgan. Yes! We've got to make Jesse Morgan put the ball on the floor. That was a soft short close out by Brandon Green. Morgan sets it up, knocks down that deep three. Eight and a little over eight minutes for Jesse Morgan. And this is the largest lead for Temple. Mason, he's got a three. Frank Mason for this team to be successful. They're going to ask him to do a lot. They're going to ask him to push it, transition, come off ball screen and make plays, and he's got to score. Right now, Kansas's defense, they're not doing anything to take Temple out of their rhythm. The whole key about defense is getting inside what you're going to give, what you're going to take away. They have not taken away Jesse Morgan so far. Shot clock under 10. Watson leans in, lost the handle on the way up, but there's Bond on the offensive glass. That's what Jalen Bond's all about right there. He's got to come up with 50-50 balls. He's got to put that big body on someone. He might look like LeBron James, but he's got to play like a power forward. Nicholson trying to come out to set the screen, and instead Mason tossed him a pass he couldn't handle. Six turnovers here in the first 10 minutes for Kansas. That is unlike the Jayhawks. They only average about 12 and a half turnovers per game. Devin Coleman, a little too strong. Scrambling on the floor, Devontae Watson to try and keep it alive. The hustle for the Owls. Bottom, it down. Another timeout called by Bill Self. Kansas is reaching for the ball. Temple's first to the floor. They're physically dominating this game. They're making the first hit. Bill Self is not a happy man. Looks like Kansas is already on Christmas break, and Temple came to play tonight. A double-digit lead for the Owls midway through the first half. Kansas players are reaching down, and Temple players are going to the floor, and that's Jalen Bond at his very best. Dribble handoff, Devin Coleman shoots, but watch the hustle, the pursuit of the basketball.
right there. Brandon Green is bending down. You see the Devin Coleman. He's first to the floor. Great job by Jalen Bond staying in the play. This is the perfect script for Frank Duffy right now. His team is winning the hustle points. Morgan is seeing a big basket. You got Jalen Mom finishing around the basket. And more importantly, you see them controlling the tempo of the game, not just with their offense, but with their defense by keeping Kansas in front and making Kansas a jump shooting team. This is a Temple team that needed to take a big step forward defensively, especially from last year to this year. Uncharacteristically, the Owls last year in the American Conference, they were last in scoring and field goal percentage defense in the league. And this year, they're already up at least to the middle of the pack, if not above. They're number four in scoring defense and number six in field goal percentage defense this year. But those numbers are all a little haphazard, and yet no one's played a conference game yet. So it can you think obviously of, vary. You think of, let's face it, you think of tough physical defense, forcing people to be jump shooters. And then Lucas came on for the first time for Kansas, and his hustle in the corner kept it alive for a moment. But it goes out off Lucas, and it's Temple with a 12-point lead, and Jalen Bond's having some fun. Jalen Bond by K. Jewelers continuing here in Philly. Temple, they've got a top 10 team in the building, and they've got a 12-point lead. And Coach Greenberg, they have been giant killers in the past. And their style of play fits this. And when you think about upsets, you own the tempo of the game. You have someone step up and make big shots. You take your opponent out of transition, make a jump shooting team. And that's exactly what Temple's done the first 10 minutes of the game. Josh Brown with a jump stop. And he is called for steps. What's difficult about being the road team? at this time of year. It seems like sometimes around the holidays, these road teams come out sluggish. Yeah, it's really difficult to have a young basketball team like this Kansas team is starting two freshmen. It's the holiday season. Everyone's left campus. And this is the first time that you're away from your family, maybe during the holidays. And you have one foot in and one foot out because after this game, these guys are going right from here home. All right, they're leaving Philadelphia and they're going to their home destinations. If you don't have both feet in and you're playing on the road, and you play against a team as well coached as Temple that can control the depth of the game, Woo. That's, that's the formula to get upset. Right now, that's what you're seeing. The drive by Dingle. Hell ball. It'll stay with Temple. Tend to shoot. And there's a perfect example. I mean, Daniel Dingle takes the ball two dribbles. Beats Kelly Oubre right off the bounce. Watch a little shake. Right straight line drive. Helps late. Oubre's got to keep the ball in front. you got to close down that gap. All right, if you're active and alert defensively, he doesn't get to the front of the rim and you don't commit that foul. Quick trigger from the corner. Morgan, air ball. Eight turnovers and only four field goals so far for Kansas. Again, they only average about 12 and a half turnovers per game. And Perry Ellis has yet to show up. Kansas is here, but Perry Ellis is another turnover as Will Cummings picks the pocket of Oubre and draws the foul. Mason called for the foul, so Will Cummings will shoot two to try and extend this tempo lead when we come back. And he'll look to get up to seven points to start off the game. He averages about 14 and a half and makes his living at the free throw line. He does because he's always attacking, he's aggressive, he's an alert defender. And this is a Kansas team that has gotten stuck offensively throughout the year. They don't have one guy that they can play through. It should be Perry Ellis, but thus far Perry Ellis has not been a factor in this game. Perry Ellis tries to assert himself here, and a foul is called. Mark Williams called for his first. And if you see this, Perry Ellis drives it in that gap. All of a sudden, the Temple defense shrinks. They all get in the lane. They're packed in. And they're early to help, which is taking away driving and finishing lanes for Perry Ellis. Selden for three. Big shot for the Jayhawks. Right now for Kansas, 
Rob, it's more about being locked in on the defensive end, limiting the Temple to one shot, and finding a way to disrupt Temple and throw offensively. Cummings steps back. It's a three. He got Lucas caught on a switch. And they say he had his toe on the line. It's a long two. Great job right there. Then by Cummings seeing the mismatch and getting that jumper in the flow offense. Offensive rebounds. And that three's too strong from Selden. Temple will run on opportunity. They'll read advantage, disadvantage. Great decision by Will Cummings, a senior. He probes the defense, doesn't have it, pulls it out. Now they're going to run clock and try to move the defense. Shot clock winding down. Cummings off the screen, drives it at Ellis. The old school one-handed floater won't go. And now it's Oubre running it down for the Jayhawks. Mason crosses over, and it's rejected. Venezionia climbs the ladder. Here's Selden, able to answer. Venezionia is going to be a very good player. He's 6'9", he's got good hands, he's got a good feel, a terrific passer. Wayne Selden right now, as one of the, the veteran players, as a sophomore of this team, he needs to great energy on the defense and he's the one guy that can take someone out and create some offense out of the defense Williams for three high rebound Williams tried to keep it alive but he knocked it right into the hands of Perry Ellis look at the pace of transition no one is sprinting they're not getting anything easy in transition Mason Austin Goes over to Temple. Well, for fans of Miracles on 34th Street, it might be. If the Knicks get a win, they'll kick off Christmas Day. It's a triple header. The most wonderful day of the year begins with Wizards Knicks at noon on ESPN. That might be the most wonderful day of the year for the Wizards. If they get to play the Knicks, then head over to ABC. NBA countdown begins at 2, followed by a good double header. Thunder Spurs and then Cavs Heat at 5. It's an NBA triple header on Christmas Day. You're not a real high in the Knicks right now. Have you glanced at their record? I think St. John's has more wins in the Garden than the Knicks do. It's been a tough start to what is going to be a brutal year at Madison Square Garden. That ball was shot in the trail spot, which is a shot Perry can make. If you saw the other four Kansas players all just watch. No work for offense position. No one read the play. They're running to spots. They're not trying to get anything out of what they're doing right now offensively. The stagger series right here. Good call by the Cozy. The Cozy with the left hand, soft off the window. And that's a terrific job of curling that screen by the Cozy. It's 6'5", you can get in the lane. But no one helped or extended that screen and helped on that curl. Another example how this Kansas team is not locked in defensively. Ellis, too strong. And Eshionia grabs the rebound. And a chance for Will Cummings to deliberately walk it up the floor and continue to shorten this game for Temple. Great job again. We need advantage this defense. We got the basketball. Let's move the defense. Let's get the shot we want. Let's make Kansas defend. See if their lack of maturity defensively right now and alertness you can get something freed up. A lot of dribble handoffs, a lot of good space. The cozy. Unloads to Ineshionia. Fade away, blocked, taken away by Cliff Alexander. Selden zips past Jesse Morgan. That caught into the basket, but finds a way to unload to Perry Ellis, who has a chance for a three-point play. Kentucky and Louisville at 2, Saturday, December 27th on ESPN2. A terrific doubleheader. A home court of college hoops. Interesting to see if Louisville can turn Kentucky over and get those 20 points they're getting out of their defense. And for Kentucky, it is hard to get to the front of the rim against those guys. I mean, they block out the sun. 
Jazz. Drive for Covey. Draws the foul. Once again, it's Kansas' inability to contain the basketball off the back. Just a little hesitation. Watch Cummings. A little step back, changes speeds. Frank Mason never gets in front. And then Cliff Alexander, you've got to rotate over, wall up, and contest that shot. If you're active, if you're alert, if you're locked in, that's a charge or a block shot. Frank Mason's better than that. Frank Mason should be able to stay in front of Will Cummings at least and force him to be a jump shooter. Second foul on Cliff Alexander. So he's the first player with a couple of personals for Kansas. Nine points already at the free throw line for Temple. Kansas hasn't scored at the free throw line yet. Oh, look at the pace that Kansas is playing with on both ends. The good teams are locked in a play with pace. That's turnover number 12. That's just looking the ball in your hands, catching the ball with two hands. I know one thing. I hope the pain is dry in the locker room of Kansas. Because I'll tell you one thing. There's not going to be a lot of adjustments made except the attitudes. They're just sleepwalking. They've got as many turnovers in the first half at this point as they normally average per game, at least so far this season. Twelve turnovers, and they average about 12 and a half per game. And they are not playing lousy competition. Here's a Kansas team that lost to Kentucky, but has wins over Tennessee, Michigan State, Florida, Georgetown, and Utah. The crazy thing about it, you'd say, well, you know, they turned it over because Temple's out in passing lanes, putting great pressure on the ball. Nicosi draws the foul. Seldon picks up the personal. And that's just, again, stay down on the shot, take wall up, make Nicosi shoot over. They covered that in their walkthrough today. That's not being on balance on your closeout, overrunning the shot fake, and then fouling the jump shooter. That foul on Seldon, his second. It's really important, Bob, for Kansas to have something positive happen to them in the next two minutes and 33 seconds. And it's got to be some type of flow and pace to their offense, and they've got to make some type of stand on the defensive end. Guy look back in the game, replacing Selden. Cliff Alexander sits down as well, as they both have two. If you're Bill Self, is there a particular player or a particular set you feel like you have to run just to get your team on track? Well, this guy right here, Perry Ellis, has got to go make a play. Jalen Bond's got a terrific job of keeping him in front and not giving an angles. Perry Ellis is a guy that needs an angle to score. But you've got to find a way to get Perry Ellis going. Jamari Trailer. That's good. He'll go to the line. That's more of Kansas basketball. They got the ball reversed. Trailer does a good job of ducking in. Watch. He faces up and rips it. And now he's taking it through the defense. And you see Ellis coming underneath for an opportunity to rebound. Watch. Face and rip. Take it through the defense. You see Ellis coming underneath. Now if he misses it, he's on the opposite side to get the offensive rebound. But there was some pace to that. There was some pressure on the defense. Devontae Watson called for the foul. That's his second. So he sits down. That's the third one and an end one situation that Kansas has had here in the first half, and they have missed all three free throws. So they haven't converted on any of their opportunities for three point plays. Here come some staggered screens. Watch the cozy, and then watch Coleman come again. So Temple turns it over. Three second violation called against the Owls. That set of stagger screens where both in the lane is supposed to be an off the lane. Watch some type of inside screen right now and try to get the ball to Perry Ellis. They're going to go high low right here. Watch them try to get him isolated. Instead, jumping in front, getting the steals, Jalen Bond. 13 turnovers for Kansas in the first half. They tried to isolate him, but if the defender's fronting, you got to swing it, seal, and get the ball reversed. You can sense Temple's confidence growing as this game gets deeper and deeper as we head towards halftime. You know, as a coach, you try to tell your players who you are and how you're going to win. And yesterday, in their scouting report, I'm sure today in their walkthrough, Fran Duffy says, like, this is how we're going to win. This is who we are. This is how we're going to win this game. We're going to control the tempo of the game. We're going to shrink the court. We're going to make you shoot jumpers over. We're going to run on opportunity. 
When he walks into that locker room, and he's going to hold him between 19 and say 23 points. Right? He can look in the eye and say, you know what? Now we got five four minute games. All right, let's win each one of these five four minute games. We can push, but let's control the tempo of the game. Let's run on opportunity. But guys, we're in position to do what we said we were going to do because we're doing it the way we said we were going to do it. This equals Temple's largest lead at 14. Trailer gets position inside, but it's blocked by Anishionia. Back outside, though, and Mason hits a three. Double figures in the first half for Frank Mason. He's got 10, and Fran Dumphy wants to call a timeout. Interesting to look at the body language of these two basketball teams. You've got the Temple team, even though Mason knocked down a three, they're running to their timeout. You see Frank Mason who knocked down a three, he's walking to his timeout. Well, this is the 12th all-time meeting between these two teams, but it's been a while since Temple last beat Kansas. How about 19 years ago today, KU was number one. It was the 1995 Jimmy V Classic at the Meadowlands, 75-66 in overtime. Temple's Mark Jackson took over. He had career highs, 31 and 12, including six offensive rebounds. And the Owls used a 10-0 run in overtime to pull off the upset. How about the players on the floor for Kansas in that game? That was the Paul Pierce, Rafe LaFrance, Shock Vaughn, Scott Pollard, Jayhawks. That was a terrific team and a huge win that year for John Chaney's club. And what did John Chaney's teams do? They controlled and owned the tempo of the game. They were physical. They made you make shots, and they had a toughness about it. That remind you of any team we're watching right now? I mean, that's that's what Temple is in the first 19 minutes of this half. There are certain schools, aren't they, where they develop a culture of how they play, and even with a coaching change, even as eras go by, you still kind of recognize the way that team plays. You put Temple in that group? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, I, you know, it, it's like the typical you know, take the subway. I mean, that's who we are. We got a little edge to us. And I think you know, Fran embraces that. This is who we are. We're a bunch of Philly guys that are going to draw a line in the sand, hit you in the face, and keep on working. Bond. Yes. Great job coming out of the timeout. Punch it inside. Perry Ellis gets caught behind. Great message by Fran Duffy and Trust and Jam Bond that we're going inside here. Temple in the first half, and they outscore Kansas by 10 off of turnovers in the first half. Bill Self squad, they got to take care of the ball, they got to be a little tougher, and they got to sit in a stance and check something. It is a double digit lead for the Owls at halftime 35 25 over Kansas. Big first half for Will Cummings to the Owls. Let's send you back to the studio now. Jonathan Coachman, Lafonso Ellis standing by the Cage Rulers halftime.
about set for the start of the second half here in Philadelphia. It's the American Conference on ESPN, and it's a 10-point lead at the break for Temple. As number 10 Kansas played a very sloppy first half, Bob Wachus and Seth Greenberg set for the second 20 minutes. I have to think at least the last 10 minutes or so in the locker room, not a pleasant person to be around, I would imagine, was Bill Self. This wasn't a kinder, gentler Bill Self, there's no doubt about it, but you got to say that Temple controlled the Temple with the game offensively and defensively. They forced 13 turnovers. How did they do that? They had good pressure on the ball, but they did a great job of shrinking the court and taking away all driving lanes and all posted material. Watch right there on the dribble penetration. You've got one, two, three, four defenders coming to the basketball. And when this play goes on as it continues, watch the two bigs right there. The two bigs do a great job. Jalen Bob and the Bob and Watson do a good job blowing up and contesting here on the dribble penetration. You see Will Cummings, he's going to step into this gap, take away that driving lane. And when he takes away the driving lane, there's nowhere for Kelly Oubre to go. He comes up with a steal, and now we're off and running and attacking. And then coming out of the timeout, Kansas tries to isolate Perry Ellis. Jalen Bond right here does a great job of stepping through, fighting it. Perry Ellis gives up on the play. Bond steps in front. Another Kansas turnover. 13 turnover scores because... Kansas was not locked in because Temple did a great job of shrinking the court and limiting the space that Kansas could play with. That's more turnovers by about a half a turnover than Kansas averages per game. 13 in the first half, and through their first 10 games, they're averaging 12.6 turnovers per game. They had a season high of 17 against Georgetown. Having said that, though, they've been here before. They beat Florida 71 to 65, and KU trailed by 15 at the half of that game. So let's see if they ignite the second half. They start with a brick thrown up by Ubre, but one down by Selden in the corner. He wins the battle. Mason for three. That was deflected, and it ends up with Jalen Bond. Bosa tried to punch that thing inside, isolate Perry Ellis. Good weak side help right there by Temple once again. Morgan. And hit the backboard first. Selden drives it, throws one wildly up, and it almost went. But he'll shoot a pair. Morgan can make that shot, but to start the half, I think that Fran Duffy would want a better shot. Move the defense, can dictate the tempo of the game, and get the shot you want coming out of halftime. Fallon Devontae Watson is his third. So let's see if Fran Dunphy might make an early move to his bench with Watson in some foul trouble. He's going to leave him on the floor with three. Interesting, Bob. Kansas only got one three times in the first half. They shoot this shot almost 90 free throws more than their opponent. The Temple's 12 to 13 from the free throw line. And Kansas is now one for five. That make by Selden was the first free throw made tonight for KU. I would expect Temple to really move the defense right here, try to get the ball reversed. Nicosi lost it. Nicosi came off that curl trying to attack. One more pass. Move the defense and once again get the shot you want. Right now, Kansas has got to try to get some flow. They've got to get some rhythm to their offense. They've got to get this thing, as Bill himself would say, to the third song. Oubre from the corner, stepped on the sideline. It's another Kansas turnover, number 14. This is the first time these two freshmen have started together on the road. And so far, they have not responded. It'll be interesting if Bill Self goes with the more veteran team as this half comes along. Away in the corner by Lubre, fouled by Quentin Nicosi. Three consecutive empty possessions for Temple, and three plays where the first guy that basically caught the basketball tried to make a play for himself. If you think about the first half, you saw the ball move, you saw them get into the clock, you saw them wait for Kansas to make a mistake defensively. We haven't seen that so far. Barry Ellis tied up. Jalen Bond thought he got a clean block. But a foul is called. So that will put Ellis at the line. 
There's Kansas reversing the ball on a skip pass, moving the defense. Ellis caught an inside screen. And that's the difference between Devonta Watson and Mark Williams. Watson bigger, now can contest that shot. Ellis can go over the top of Williams. A game like this, seldom an ounce. Your two ghost guys, they need to step up and make plays. Right now, and, and, and Frank Mason, right now you've got a young basketball team on the floor as a coach. You're going to your upper class. Even though he's only a sophomore, you're going to Wayne Selvin. You're going to Frank Mason. And you're going to Perry Ellis and say, you know, this game is on you guys. You understand what this game is all about. The game before Christmas on the road. Let, this is your team. Put your arms around this game right now. They're creeping back in it as multiple times in the first half. Temple led by as many as 14, but it's down to eight. And the Owls haven't scored in the first two minutes and 10 seconds of the second half. Cummings for three. That's way off the mark. Bond can't save it. It's a shot clock violation anyway, as it didn't hit the rim. It's another empty trip for Temple to start off the second half. And a better defensive trip for Kansas keeping it in front. But Fred Duffy doesn't mind that clock running down. I think you would like to see Will Cummings attack off the bounce and try to get in the lane on the play. They're going to the ball screen continuity, trying to isolate Perry Ellis right here. Spin. Ellis went right at Bond. Too strong. There's Oubre with the putback. On third side, they got the ball reversed, had a little better rhythm to that possession. Morgan, quick trigger. Look at the pace right now, Kansas. A little bit better bounce, a little bit better movement. Alexander a deep two. I think that Bill Suff would like to see that ball swung and have a foul to set a ball screen right there. Watson leads in. That's the first bucket of the second half of Temple. Great job by Watson slipping that ball screen. Zeldin, tough jump stop. Hacked behind by Morgan. And here comes Jesse Morgan. Throws it to midcourt. Broken up by Mason. Saved. And the finger roll comes up short for Zeldin. Good charge, Bob. I thought I had position. The, the official might have called a block, but I think you had the charge. Uh, I was really struck by how quickly you jumped right in there to get in between me and harm's way. You got secret service written all over you, right? You said you are taking the bullet for your partner. Frank Mason comes and joins us at the table. Frank, how you doing? How things in <laughs> Petersburg? Same high school as Moses Malone, by the way, and one of my former players, Sidarian Reigns. Frank Mason He's a scored, tough kid. Love the kid. He scored 1,901 points at Petersburg High School, second only to Moses. Jacozzi inside. And the lead is back up to double digits. Jamar Trello doesn't even see the basketball. Easiest two points to close and get a lead. Oubre leans in. No good. Follows his own miss. That's a downhill drive by Oubre. Right now, I, I like what uh, Bill Sass do. He's got to extend his defense. He's got to find a way to speed this game up, get more possessions in the game, and try to make this Temple team a little uncomfortable. Morgan finds Watson. He got stymied in the lane. Banks it home. I think he might have gotten away with a little walk right there, but good job of collecting himself and little Jim Cook. They heard him on back to back ball screens. Wide open trailer. Foul calls in the lane, and that will go against the Owls. Oubre had position looking for the offensive rebound, and the foul calls on Nicosi. Underneath out of bounds, see the ball, great job, great eye contact underneath, and then good slip by by Don Rodney Watson, collects himself, shoots the jump hook. We got a 10-point game with the Owls on top.
At Seth Greenberg, I'm Bob Wischusen. A struggle here on the road right before Christmas for Kansas. The 10th ranked Jayhawks toe to toe with Temple, and the Owls have controlled this game throughout. Up by double digits for about two thirds of the game. Here's Mason, a little too strong, and the double digit lead continues for Temple as Devontae Watson pulls down the rebound. Interesting watching this Temple defense. They're playing toes to the three point line, so it is really hard to get to the basket without being contested at the rim. Under 10. Will Cummings penetrates. Draws the foul. Scores the bucket. 13 for Will Cummings and a chance for a 14. Will Cummings does a great job right here. We call it snaking it. Packs the big, crosses over, snakes it, and takes it into the shop blocker. Cummings is really crafty coming off those ball screens. That was the first foul on Perry Ellis and the first second half foul called against Kansas. But it stretches the lead back up to 13. Ellis off the window. No good. And that rebound will go against, or the foul on the rebound goes against Jamari Trailer. We might create the headline of the entire night right here in Philadelphia with Kansas number 10 down 13 to Temple. 13 and a half to go. Zakozi stretches the lead. That's just too easy. Off in one bounce, turn the corner. I got a question. You do a Wichita State game. You announce angry? <laughs> this is the largest lead for the Owls. Oubre comes up short, but his follow is good. In the second half now, Kansas is 3 for 15 from the field. And they haven't taken bad shots. Okay, you can't go under on that. They do a great job on those dribble handoffs. Just goes and turns the corner and the finger roll is good. They do a great job of dribbling out the defender on those dribble handoffs. That's just lazy late defense. And you're going to see, I think it was Kelly Uber come out of the game after that. Ellis can't hit. I would be shocked if I didn't see Graham Dunphy reverse the ball a couple times, trying to get some big dribble handoff with a bait. Dunphy so gets a back door. Ellen Bond over Ellis. Backs it home. Five straight main field goals for Temple. And they are up by 17. This is hard to believe. Oubre Jr. is fouled. Jesse Morgan will put Oubre Jr. at the free throw line when we return. But it's Temple by 17 with under 12 to go. This is a huge opportunity for Temple. It's a huge opportunity for their conference. SMU had a win. This past weekend against Michigan on the road, SMU for the first time all season, they are whole. Coached by Larry Brown. Marcus Kennedy's back and gives him another inside player. And we talk about that Cincinnati one. Let's talk about Nick Cronin, who did not coach against VCU. They found an unruptured aneurysm. Uh, and he actually had a, a, a text with him today. Uh, he had a good meeting with his doctors. They're still trying to figure out the plan of attack. But uh, he said he will be up to coach again. It's just uh, that they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. Mick Cronin is one of the great, great guys in our business. He's a coach's coach. His dad was a coach, and uh, the most important thing is his health, but we look forward to seeing him back on the Sunday. And we'll send him our best as the shot clock winds down. Cummings can't finish. Bodies on the floor as Frank Mason comes the other way. The guy look. Crossover. Can't finish with the left hand. But a foul call. That will go against Hunter Mickelson in traffic. 
That's a 17-year-old. A year from now, he's going to be stronger. He's going to be tougher. He'll be up to play two contact as opposed to play away from contact on that play. Alongside Seth Greenberg, I'm Bob Lashusen. 11 minutes to go. Can Kansas push a button? Is there some lineup on the floor that Bill Self can put together to get this turn back in their direction? Morgan rises up. He knocks down a three. I've been there. We played Kansas at Kansas. We were number one in the country when I was at Long Beach. And I, I had a trainer named Dan Bailey. And we were in a similar type situation. About 16 minute timeout. I turned on Bells. We're about 15 minutes of Bells. How are we doing? There was a lot of time left in the clock. <laughs> Went to him about 12 or about 14. He said, What do you think he was going to do for a run? And about four minutes, he finally tapped me on the shoulder. And he said, I think we're in pretty good shape. You know what? Van Dunphy, he's got to survive the next four or five minutes. I think they're in pretty good shape. They are controlling the tempo of this game offensively and defensively. And that's the art of the upset. Cummings around Nicholson, but dribbled it off his leg. Yeah, the problem with this Kansas team is they can't score. They really struggle scoring. So it's not like you can go and play through someone, they can go get a shot. Frank Mason's the one guy that can go get his own shot. Kelly Oubre's still learning how to get a shot. Perry Ellis is struggling finishing in the lane. So this team is really void of a guy that you say, right, we're going to give him the ball, go make a play. Oubre has scored the last nine, and that barely glances the rim for Wayne Selden. I know the way a coach thinks they're due for a run, but looking at this game objectively, what have you seen out of Kansas tonight to make them think that that run is coming? Other than the fact that they've just got good players, and logic states they're at some point going to get something going. But Jesse Morgan keeps knocking down threes. What difference? Will we will begin the historic first season of the college football playoff with the Rose of Sugar. I got a question. Is there any truth to the rumor you tried to dump me on tonight's assignment to go to either Boca Raton or uh, San Diego? Or no. Why would I ever want to go to Florida when I can come to Philly and hang out with Seth Greenberg? That runner goes for Frank Mason. Morgan gives it up. And it works to perfection as an Eshionia knocks down about a 12-footer. Really good job, baseline drove and Nishionia comes behind the penetration, shoots him with confidence, he's a talented young freshman, the most freshman are young. <laughs> Ellis drives it, knocked away by Jalen Bond. Morgan. The most highly thought of conference in college basketball, but that's not the case in the American. Temple needs a win like this because who knows how many wins it will take in American play just to make the tournament. And that's that's going to be the key. Uh, right now, you look at the American. Is it the conference tournament champion? Can they get a second team in? Can they get a third team in? Where does Bill Self look for answers? To try and crawl back in it in the last eight and a half. They go down to the veteran, Perry Ellis. And he can't hit from point blank range. Another try won't go. And a frustrating night continues inside for the Jayhawks. But Ellis will go to the line. Pretty good execution. They got Ellis isolated. Good job of targeting away from the defense. Kind of the history of tonight is his inability to finish, whether it's the physicality of Temple, their size, or their length. Ellis needs to finish if this team's going to win their 11th Big 12 championship. That foul called on Jalen Bond, his second. You can see Perry Ellis, one of 10 from the field. Knocks down a couple at the line. Now, Bobby, you're playing against a senior guard like Will Cummings. It's hard to speed him up. It's hard to get him out of tempo. He's going to play the game at his pace, the pace that Coach Duffy wants him to play at. He's not going to take an ill-advised shot. He's not going to chase a shot. That's his first bucket. 
watching Kemp in practice yesterday, they thought they could drive the Kansas Guards. And at the end of shot clocks, they've been able to drive the Kansas Guards. Cummings again. He gets into the middle at will. This entire night, whenever Will Cummings has wanted to get the ball in the paint, he's been able to. A great decision by the Michigan game, seeing that, you know what? Let's use a little clock. Let's make one more pass. Let's move the defense. We're playing against the clock right now. We'll pick our spots. Cummings again, knocked away by Mason. Four to shoot. So it stays with Temple when we come back from the Owls by 23 over Kansas with 7.16 to go. We have 10 players on the preseason top 50 for the Wooden Award on our air tonight, including four for Kansas alone. And yet the Jayhawks are the team getting blown out in Philly by Temple as we speak. None of those players for Kansas tonight have played like Wooden Award winners. And there are no players on that top 50 list for Temple, but they have owned the evening up by 23. And now it's up by 25. Strong drive from Devin Coleman. And that's just quitting on the play, giving up a straight line drive, coming out of the timeout. You know, what, I have a, a pet peeve. I do not think that freshman should be on the wooden watch list until the middle of the season when they just miss. you got to earn your way on that list. That's not, that's not a right. Some people have given Bill Sutton a hard time about not playing his freshman, Alexander Rubre, to start. You know what? I commend him. Because playing time is earned. And, and freshmen in general, they've got to learn how to practice. They've got to learn how to compete. They've got to learn how to be accountable. And as we see just today, they've got to learn how to play on the road the game before Christmas. And not just the freshman, because, you know, Perry Ellis, he's the guy that should set the tone for this team, and he hasn't tonight. That foul on Brown was the seventh on Temple, so... It's a one and one that Cliff Alexander is able to convert. And Cliff Alexander is probably the perfect example of what you're talking about. And Bill Self said he's an infant as far as college basketball is concerned. He just mauled people in high school with his size, but now you have to learn how to play. You gotta learn how to play. You gotta learn how to show on the ball screen, run the floor, stand up the post, hold the C up, finish the contact. You know, help off the weak side, be alert defensively, all those things. Those have to be drilled. It's not a habit. I, it's a long season. Oubre, Alexander, they're going to be terrific players. Uh, but the reality is there is a process. And, you know, in our society today, everyone wants it to happen right now. High old school floater for Will Cummings. Is that guy Rogers or Will Cummings? What a night it's been for Will Cummings. Green can't hit the three. It stays with Kansas. 14 tonight for Will Cummings. Great job. You talk about him getting into the lane at Will. Little hesitation, little runner. That's Philly basketball right there now. That's a Philly guard. Now, he might be from Jacksonville, but after four years in a city of brotherly love, that's a city Philly guard. Off the screen. It finally goes down for Mikhailuk. As he's able to hit a three, that's his first bucket. You know who's real happy right now? Kevin McGavin. He's the all-time Temple home. He has got to be out of his mind right now. He's probably having a cheesesteak, a pretzel, and watching this game and losing his mind. Offensive rebound of the Nesionia miss. And Bond with a smart play to kick it back out. And that allows the Owls to continue to work on the clock. And look at Cummings. He attacks. He pulls it back. He milks the clock. Great job by Josh Brown. Not attacking, but again, backing up. You're playing against the clock right now. Once again, they are controlling the tempo of the game. Coleman on the drop. Draws the foul. Goes down hard. Hey, Bob, Hammered you, by Alexander. When you were driving down the turnpike today, you were probably driving down the turnpike saying, you know, I'm going to do a game after Carrie Greenberg, but, you know, this probably would be an interesting game because, you know, 
Tap the home game, but Kansas did one eight in a row. They'll probably figure out a way to get a 10, 12 point game, huh? I was thinking there was a chance we could see a 20 point win. For Kansas. It's not the one we've got. That's why we play the games. That's no what question. We, that's why when people say, you know, basketball, they play so many games. I don't No, they count because right here, this win, one, you can't take it away from the Temple kids. Right? Number two is this could be one of those season defining wins. No question. That gives you a momentum. And you lose this game, you don't have any other opportunities. But if Kansas has the season we expect them to have. Guy look way too strong with the left hand. When they, Held ball, and it will stay with KU. When they go into that room and they say, wait a second, last four teams, teams on the bubble. Wow. You know, hey, they took care of business in league. They're whole. They weren't whole early in the season to those other losses. They got Morgan, they got Coleman. This team's a team that can win a game in the NCAA tournament. And they got to continue to play well. But this is a season to find a win. This is a really cool thing to be part of, in my opinion. We have those journey to the tourney games that we present by Sonic as Mikhailo comes up short. And this is one of those for Temple. We define those games as teams involved in those games where the outcome can affect the NCAA tournament field. And this is one of those games, no question. You look at Selection Sunday, if Temple makes it, and depending on what seed they get, this is a one or two seed move type of a win for them. If they're able to hold on and win by 20 plus against Kansas. And it's the way they're playing. They're playing really good basketball. Look at the ball movement. Look at the decision making. Look at the spacing. Fionia. That's a little too strong. Speaking of Danny Manning, there's Evan Manning and his son. Good hustle by Josh Brown to break up the entry pass intended for Landon Lucas. And this is a Kansas team. Devontae Graham got stepped on in the Georgetown game. He could be out two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. He was the backup point guard, another point guard that could play with Frank Mason. They miss his toughness, his ability to pressure the basketball. But he would not have made any difference in this basketball game. This has been domination by a tough group of city kids that played to win this game. Mason rattles home a triple. And I'll actually call that a long two. Toe on the line for Frank Mason. So it's a 20-point move. So let me ask a question, Bob. Uh, you big believe in storm the court? Did they storm the court in Philly? I don't know if they storm the court at the Wells Fargo. I would say right now for the Leah Chorus Center, this might be a storm the court type night. Is this illegal or illegal storm the court? I mean, like, I mean if, if they win this game, I'll tell you one thing. This Temple team, they deserve to storm the court. Temple's beaten top 10 teams before. We'll see. Only 25% in the second half shooting for Bill Self's team. And they have been beaten as badly in half number two as they were in half number one. I thought Temple was good in the first half. They've been great in the second half. Their ball movement, their spacing, uh, decision making. And then defensively, they've been good for all 40 minutes. And another guy that goes to the floor and another four guys that are watching go to the floor. This will be an interesting film session when Kansas comes back from the holiday break. Will Cummings, he is, isn't he fun to watch? I mean, it's his game. And these other guys. You know. With a slug on the shot clock, lets the three go and drops it right over the top of Makano. He's got 15 of the last 19 scored by Temple. And a foul called again on Hunter Mickelson for Kansas away from the ball. And it goes from bad to worse. Look at Cummings. Little rhythm dribble. He gets the mismatch. Just knocks it down. He plays with such great feel. I mean, he's like playing like down in the park, like in the old Sunny League. And the guy on the hall just, oh, I got to switch. A little rhythm dribble. Let me jump up and knock down that jumper. By the way, their practice facility that they built there, big time attention. And it's helped because they signed three terrific players in this recruiting class. Uh, and... They're just going to continue to get good players this year. 
Fred Dunkey has the trust of his players. And this place has got a great tradition. Nicosi on the kick out. It's a party here in Philly. The Temple fans are rocking here at the Wells Fargo Center as they are blowing the doors off the Jayhawks. The Temple guards have done a great job of keeping the game in front, not getting beat. They've really been alert defensively for all 40 minutes. Great job of coming back and rebounding the basketball. What a game. Kansas is going to be good, Bob. They're, they're a good team. Kansas is good. Temple was just... Can you say flawless? I guess flawless is a good word. Can this be healthy for a team? Can Kansas getting beat this badly be enough of an eye-opener as the Cozy sails in with the exclamation point? Bill Self's a great teacher. Obviously, we're going to get a lot of lessons from this game. Getting drilled this bad, I think you learn from it, you move on. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a good lesson because these kids are going to get away from everything. My concern about this game is when these kids go home, they're going to get some static in their ear, and the static might not be healthy for Bill Self's team. You get the collective curtain call now as Fran Dumpy. That's who they were tonight. They were first to the floor. They picked up 50 50 balls. They attacked the basket. They made plays. Hey, they're coached by the winningest coach in the history of the Big Five, and he's got a lot more underneath his belt in the future. Nicholson is fouled inside by Jimmy McDonald. I do think there is a concern for Kansas. How are they going to score? Can they contain the basketball? Uh, and just, they're going to need Wayne Selden, Frank Mason, and Perry Ellis to play well if they're going to win their 11th Big 12 championship. Right now, even with their wins early in the season, they are going to have to play a lot better to beat Iowa State, Texas, and the rest of the Big 12. I'll tell you what, Oklahoma's got a terrific starting five. So this is a deep, deep Big 12 conference. I think word circulated to the student section that Seth Greenberg was wondering if this was court storming worthy. I think we're going all out. And you know what? This is a, as the, as the commissioner of court storming, this will be a totally legal court storm. I just hope they don't come from behind us. Baseline to start the fill, Bob. Seven seconds to go. And then the celebration will officially be on. You as Temple has dominated this game. You got Aaron McKee on the bench there. One of the Temple greats. Uh, this has got to be pretty cool for him as a former player seeing this. Team. And here they go. So Temple gets the win over number 10 Kansas. They have lost their previous three meetings against KU, the first time since 1995. That they beat the Jayhawks, and they get to celebrate possibly a season-defining win here at the Wells Fargo Center. This is an explosive storm the court. I mean, this was fast developing. Everyone's all in. We got the big heads. I mean, this is this is a this is a big time court storm. I mean, this is unbelievable. Even their star coming is tough. Court storm. We got selfies, we got tubas, we got saxophones, umbrellas, big heads, and a big time temple win. A 25 point runaway for Temple over Kansas. We'll come back in just a moment and talk to Fran Dunphy. For now, let's head back to the studio.
All right, coach, thanks very much. The party is on, and your team deserves it because they were the harder working team tonight. Did you sense that level of intensity early on? It seemed to be a difference between your team and KU. Well, I was hoping we would come out and play really hard and play really smart, and then we got a we got a little bit fortunate. I would say that, that one jump hook by Devontae Watson in the second half that banked in from about 12 feet away, I think, was an indication maybe it was our night. That's all. And you know, we made shots. I thought Will Cummings was terrific. Uh, he got the ball to good good to our shooters, and he also scored it greatly. So uh, everybody played well. In order for us to do what we did tonight, everybody's got to play great. Coach, you controlled the tempo of the game offensively and defensively. When you were prepared for this game, what did you tell your team? Like, the vision you wanted to create for them, we have to do this, this, and this to win. What did you tell them? Well, I think always the same, Seth. We, we talk about managing the game. You know, we're playing a team that if we're going to get up and down the floor with, they probably have a few more weapons than we do. So we got to be really smart and intelligent about it. I just thought our defense was very competitive tonight, and that, that's the biggest thing. If you compete, you got a chance. And... Obviously, this is our home court. We have a nice win in front of a, a very good crowd for us, so we're we're thrilled. I know there's a couple bucks in the Temple basketball budget. You probably could afford the bus ride down here, but the subway tokens, maybe they're a little cheaper, but does this send a message to your team that this is our city? We're kind of a city team when you, you know, take the train down here to go to I, the game? I think really what we're doing is paying homage to all those people that went to Temple University for all those years, and they, that's how they had to go to school was on the subway. Get out of the subway, go to their go to a class, get back on the subway and get, get to their part-time jobs that they could afford the money to go to school and get back home again. That's just what that's what this school is. It's a hard-working blue-collar school and it's a really good good group of people that uh, that have been Temple grads for a long time. So it's nice to say for everybody. Every program's trying to look for a season-defining win that they can build on. You finally hold. You get Jesse Morgan, you get Devin Coleman. How good can this team be moving forward, and how do you get them to keep this in perspective, come back and use these next few weeks to get ready for league play? Well, that's, that's a real good question. I think we have to build on this and say, you know, we're good enough to play with a, a lot of teams in the country, but we can't do it without being terrific on the defensive end and making really good choices on the offensive end. And uh, So tonight we, we got that done, but uh, I, I think the world of Bill Self and, and Kansas, and so we're, we're lucky to win the game and fortunate. Uh, and I'm really happy for our guys. Coach, thank you. Appreciate right, it. Bob, Congratulations. Thanks, Appreciate it. Enjoy. At, right, happy thanks, holidays. Sir. Appreciate it. That's Fran Dumphy. What a win for the Temple Owls. Dominant performance over Kansas. A court storming here in Philadelphia. 25-point blowout for the Owls. Jonathan Coachman, back to you.